everyone it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio and today I'm just going to show you something that I do when I don't know what to do. Also when I get a pile of paints or papers that I want to use up and be done with and these three Dilutions paints are the only ones left of my extensive co collection of Dilutions paints and these wide pots that didn't dry up. Um, I put water in them, I tried Floetrol, and I just, all the rest of them got tossed. So these are the three left. There's a gray, a blue, and a bright pink. Then I also have these four um, Adirondack acrylic paint daubers. There's an orange, a light pink, kind of a peach, and a bright pink. And they are also ones that I want to use up so that I can be done with them. They don't really go with anything else in my collections and I, I want to use up this paint. Also I have um, a lot of this deli paper that has marks or paint or different stuff on it. It's not clean anymore because it was used as under paper. Yes I do have a sil silicone mats on my desk. Yes I do have a glass mat. Even under that I have another mat but what do I do? I put paper under my projects. I just don't like to clean. I don't like to clean the silicone. It, you know, it's there, and if something gets on it, it's super easy to clean. I don't know what my problem is, but I'm constantly putting a sheet of 12 by 12 deli paper, which is something that I use for collage. I constantly put that under my projects. So I end up with these marks or um, places where paint ran over, or just, you know, maybe I tucked it in between the pages of a journal. I often do that to protect the pages on the other sides. And I just, I have them left. So I just, every once in a while, when I don't feel motivated, I don't feel like I want to create something. I don't really want an art journal. I don't want to make a canvas. I just, I don't know what I want to do. And I have all this stuff. I just decide to make painty papers. So that is what this video is about. And it's about using up paint, it's about using up paper. If that bores you, that's fine. I mean, I to me, that watching this is similar to watching gel printing, and I could do that, I could do gel printing with this paper as well. It's kind of crinkly because it has been used and perhaps it's been, um, well, I don't I don't think I wrinkle it up. I just, I have this, this big uh, plastic bin and I just keep putting them in there and then, I just put everything in there that's that's not attached to something, uh, except for the little pieces, the tiny pieces that have been torn and I only have a little bit left. I put those in a separate smaller plastic basket. And then the larger ones, like maybe the gel prints or the whatever I've been doing on the channel, I put those in a different larger bin that sits behind me. And then occasionally I sort them out into colors, which I should do more often. But these ones that just have a little bit of paint, they aren't quite clean, so they're not ready for the next, the, you know, the next video because the paper is dirty or whatever. Those papers just get chucked in that bin too. So then every once in a while I have to get them out and look at them and figure out, you know, what I'm going to do with them. If they're torn up too much, I, I can throw them away. I feel like it's okay if they're so torn, but I just don't like to waste paper. I really don't. It makes me just makes me annoyed. <laughs> and so I tend to just make more and more and more painty paper. At some point, I'm going to have to sort out the paper. I'm going to have to either uh, give it away or sell it because it gets to be too much. I can't use it all. Um, one way that I do use this painty paper besides collage and additions to my art journals is I will sometimes make little art journals little books because I like to make books also um, not the same as filling books those are two different um, activities I do like to make books so sometimes I use them uh, for for uh, pages if I because you know it's nice to have a page in an art journal when you start that already has something on it it's not finished but it's already got something on it so most of these ended up being similar colors which is kind of nice because that means I can use them together in a project in an in a you know like a collage project or something because they're similar colors we've got we've got
got gray, we've got blue, we've got bright pink, we've got orange, we've got a different pink, and we've got a light pink and a peach. Because these are the paints I'm trying to use up. Did I use them up? No. Unfortunately, no. I didn't. <laughs> I wished I had. But you can just see all the different techniques that I use. And, I mean, these aren't all the techniques that I use. This is, I just, I was doing this um, for a couple days. I did, I did a bunch of it. Then I left it out on my desk because I had to go do other things. I had an actual life. I had to do things. Came back the next morning and they were all there. So I just started to add more layers. But adding la layers and making them more interesting is super easy with stencils, with, um, mark making tools like this old credit card. Uh, there are so many ways you can use something like that. You can scrape the paint on, you can make lines, you can make dashes, you can make scratches. Um, an old, cre an old credit card or key card is really like a useful tool in mixed media. Um, you can apply paint through a stencil by using the credit card, by using uh, your dirty baby wipe by using a palette knife, by using a sponge or a brush or any of the ways that you might want to uh, put paint through a stencil. Um, another thing that you see me do a lot in this video that I actually do a lot is if I do cover the entire page like I just did with that the leftover blue paint that I had left after I scooped some out, I will take a baby wipe and you could do this with a rag too. I just I use the baby wipes because it's easy. Um, and I will put a stencil down and then clean through it. So I end up getting two different colors of blue there. And then I took the baby wipe and I wiped it on the next piece. So this, this is how it goes. This was the first session. Then this is the next day. And they were still all laying out on the table. So I grabbed them up and cleaned off the desk because I needed to do something else, which included video. Then I got the stack back out with a new underpaper, which is another dirty piece of deli paper, <laughs> which will get more dirty as I do this. And I just started to add more stuff. That was an India ink pen, and it already had that kind of a mark on it before I put the paint on. So I just continued making that splashy flower mark and I figured that one was done. Uh, I got I grabbed my bin of 4x4 stencils. Most of these 4x4 stencils are from Stencil Girl Stencil Club. Um, they've changed their format and they're not sending out 4x4s anymore. Um, instead they've increased your amount of square inches by getting two 9x12s so it's an even better deal than it was before. But um, some of these 4x4s are not because they do sell 4x4s, but most of them are because I haven't purchased very many of the 4x4 size. But, it, you know, when you're doing something like, something like this, a little basket on your desk of 4x4s, or in also there I have my ATC mashup, um, ATC mix-up, I guess that's what it's called, uh, stencils as well. And 6 by 6 are great for this, too. I just, these two bins are there next to my desk that has, one of them has loose 4 by 4s and the other one has my ATC ones that I've cut up. They come on a 9 by 12 with nine designs. I've actually designed one myself, and you can purchase it over at Stencil Girl. And you can take a guillotine cutter and just cut them up. And then I put them on a little flexible ring and you'll see those come out too as well. Um, something that's super easy. I don't keep the under paper in a 12 by 12 format. I, I use my metal ruler and tear it up into smaller pieces because it's unlikely, in fact, it's, it's just never gonna happen that I'm gonna need an entire piece of 12 by 12 paper in a pattern and color right? I'm not going to take this 12 by 12 paper and, paper and glue it to something. It's going to be small pieces. I'm going to end up tearing it up anyway. So why not make more variety by tearing the pieces up and making them different? So it's still the same colors because I'm still using these same paints. I think at some point I do throw in a couple other colors of paint just out of the drawers next to me. I have a rolling drawer, drawer cart right to the left of my desk that I can reach in and get acrylic paints. What are other things you could do? 
Well, you will see me do some mark making with some pencils and pens at the end. Uh, you could also splash them with some watercolor or alcohol ink. You could use your woodies. You could use your gel sticks. You could use your um, uh, Fabric Castell, Gelatos. I mean, any of that stuff can be used to make mark making on here. If you have a lot of mark making tools that you like to use in gel printing, like leftover tubes and bubble wrap and sequin waste and um, your own own handmade stamps or purchased stamps that have, you know, a random texture like a text or uh, something like that. Ink, you know, you can you can just continue to work on these pieces until they're completely just jazzed up. But I tend to go only so far. I might make some some tracing marks on them, or little dots or splatters, drips, something like that. But mostly I leave them pretty much with two or three layers of paint because when I put them on the piece, I want to still have something left that I can do. I can make more marks on it. I can draw around things. I can, you know, do things to them in addition to make them be included in a composition on my canvas or my art journal page that I'm going to use. So I don't go all the way, but you absolutely could. In fact, a fun thing to do with these is to throw a pack of gel pens and a little stack of these into your bag when you are traveling or when you are waiting at a doctor's office or something like that. You know, we all have downtime. What do we do with this downtime when we're waiting? Most of us look at our phone, right? We look at Facebook, we look at Instagram. What if you had a little pack of these and you could even like put them on a ring or something and just a gel pen and you just sit there and you, and you created pattern on top of these. That would be an excellent way to use them. In fact, I might throw some of them in my travel case um, and do just that because the more you add to them, the more interesting they are. And so it's always nice to just continue adding and tracing and, you know, whatever. You could even put some of your gelatos or something like that or, or Posca pins or whatever you like to use instead of gel pins. Um, the only gel pins I have are those shiny ones, which would look super cool on here. But this is just something that you can do. And it has benefits like using up stuff that you want to use, as well as giving you time to be creative and focus on something creative without any expectation that you're going to suddenly make a masterpiece, you know? Sometimes we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Like, oh, I need to make this thing beautiful. And, and for someone like me who's impatient, I don't have time. I don't have the energy to just sit and let something dry and then come back the next day and come back the next day. So when I have these little pieces that I can put together in a pleasing way, I can do that fairly quickly. And maybe... Maybe it takes a couple days or maybe it only takes an hour and I can make something that I'm super happy with. That's the reason that I love collage because you can start with something that's already something. It's already painty paper. It's already a gel print. It's already something from a magazine. It already has a form that can then be combined in an interesting way with colors and other products and can make something else that is now something more complete that expresses the way that I think or feel. That's why I like it. This, this is the type of mixed media that I absolutely love and do frequently. So I know there's other people out there like me, and I, I hope that uh, this video is interesting to you. I don't know when it'll come out. I don't even know. I might actually, I have some other orange and pink papers that I made a different day. I don't know. Was it last week? Was it week the week before? I don't know. And I'm thinking about maybe making a larger piece using those colors. I'm, I must be like wanting summer to come because to me, orange and bright pink and bright yellow is summer. Those, those colors represent warmth and 
heat and interest and passion. And so I must be craving that right now in the, this less than ideal weather that I don't particularly enjoy. Winter is just too yucky. It's always overcast. It's cold. It's like, yes, I know you people, some of you have it way, way, way worse than me. I know that. I mean, I live in Arizona where it ne hardly ever snows, but it's still cold to me and it's still overcast and the light is wrong. The light is just gray and it makes me sad. So I must be thinking that I want to make something with these colors because they're really, these bright pinks and oranges are really attracting me right now. So I will probably be making some with th something with these soon with the pink and orange ones in combination of some of the others that I made. And I don't know what it will be, but uh, I'm sure you'll see it here on the channel. In fact, my, my big project I was planning on making for the members of the channel might actually be the one that I do with this. So if you're not a member yet, you can always join. It's $1.99 uh, for the United States, and that's a month. And you get uh, an exclusive video, which right now is trending towards a somewhat edited but mostly in real time video based on the polls that I've been taking of the members. And um, that exclusive video will come out on the 15th of every month. I might, might also add other things, I'm not sure. But you also get some um, emojis and icon things that I created myself that are digital that only members get. So those little things, yeah, I mean $1.99 a month. I know if you're in Australia, it's $2.99. I don't know about any place else, but it's just, it's dependent on the exchange of the currency. So you can sign up, you can make it just automatically pays every month on whatever day you signed up. I just signed up for Peg's membership because she opened hers up to you. So hers is $1.99 also. So anyway, now I'm doing uh, just whatever was on my desk, pencils. This one is an ink tense pencil and I think I activate it with water. Um, I think I had a, a yellow Stabilo pencil um, that I used on one of them. You saw me before using the India ink pen, the brush pen, uh, that type of stuff I like to do and I'll probably do it a little bit more on some of these. But I needed to get this video done and edited and I mean, I don't know if somebody will want to watch this. But people watch gel printing and so <laughs> if you watch gel printing you probably like watching this too. It's the same type of, to me, it's it's not the same process, but it's the same type of activity of making something that's going to be used in the future. Here's a white Posca pen. That's always a favorite for sure. And of course, Posca pens don't run, whereas the, the Stabilos, when I go to attach it to something else, um, if I get it too wet, the marks will move. So probably... India ink and Posca pins and ink tints that you've activated are probably uh, the best ones. Or dripping, or more layers of paint, or splatters, or I don't know, whatever you want. It's super fun, something to do. Intuitive, doesn't require engaging your brain fully, but more just thinking and feeling and letting your hands move doing something creative and using up stuff that you don't need anymore. So that's it for me. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment or question below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And of course, you can join my channel. So that's it for me for today. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.